What's up guys, welcome back to another tutorial. It's been a while since I made a tutorial, but I'm really excited to make this one today. Today we're gonna to be looking at scraping sofascore.com, which if you don't know what sofascore is, it's a really popular stats website. And the reason I'm excited to show this tutorial is because it's gonna introduce a couple of advanced web scraping techniques that I've been able to learn over you know, my web scraping journey as well as it's going to enable a lot of people to get some really good quality data during their web scraping. So like I said, if you don't know what SofaScore is, it is a stats and kind of analysis website. They have a ton of different sports. We're just gonna be looking at football or soccer. So they have all these different games. They have ratings, you know, um, they have betting odds as well, and they have a ton of leagues. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a game and I'm gonna show you guys how you can scrape the shots for a specific game, just all of the shots. So we're gonna look at this Tottenham um, Manchester United game here. And when you click on it here, it just kind of pops up in the side, but if you click show more, that'll take you to the actual entire um, page. So what we wanna do is there's a ton of stats here that you could potentially scrape. What we're going to do is we are going to come and get all of these shots down here. So we're gonna scrape all the different shots. As you can see, they have for each team, they have the shots and they have the player and expected goals as well. And, and they also have expected goals on target. So if the shot was on target, then that shot is included in the XGOT. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go jump into a Jupyter Notebook. So if we go jump over here, I just have one open. So we're only gonna use two packages. The first one is requests. So we'll say import requests. So this one just allows us to make um, HTTP requests to a website. And then as well, we're gonna use beautiful soup to be able to parse the different um, HTML and CSS that's in the page. So we'll say from BS4, import beautiful soup. And the B and the S need to be capitalized because if they're not, it won't work. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go get the URL and make a request to that page. So what we do is we come over here and we can fetch the URL. So if you just grab the entire URL, go back to our Jupyter Notebook. So this is the URL and we'll say, oops, response equals request.get. And then we wanna plug in that URL right there and just make sure you didn't copy that or accidentally leave it right there. So if we run it, and then usually what I do when I just run a like a request.get is I check the status code. So the HTTP status code. So if we say response.status code, and we got a 403. So a 403 usually means that we've been blocked or they've identified us like as some sort of bot or we're missing something that makes it look like we're not a human essentially. So what we need to do is actually plug in something called headers. So headers are just what your browser sends to a website. And the easiest way to see what your headers are is if you just Google, what are my headers? And then just click on this, what is my browser.com? And you can see them all here. So this is everything that your browser is sending about you and your attempt to go to a website every time that you visit a web page. So as you can see, they have a bunch of like what your host is, where you came from, but this is the one we're the most interested in and the one we're gonna need, it's this user agent down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and I usually like to make a new line, but just come here and say, we need to add another argument. So put a comma after the URL and then say headers equals and then as a dictionary, so with the curly brackets, you're gonna say user dash agent as the key and then a colon. And then we're just gonna go copy whatever is here for you. So for me, it says I'm on a um, Macintosh and I'm using like, this is my Chrome, this is my Safari versions essentially. So we'll copy that, come back here, put it in a string. And now if we run this again, and we run response.status code again, we have a 200, which means that the request was successful. That means that they did not block us from attempting to scrape that website or that page. So now what we need to do is we need to create a way to parse the page. So usually in web scraping, you create something called soup 
and you say soup is equal to beautiful soup and then in parentheses you do response.text comma and then do html.parser it's like this so now we're kind of like okay how do we figure out what we actually need to parse and the easiest way to do this is if you come back to the page right here so what we want to do is we want to essentially scrape all of these shots all of these different data points that will give us the location it'll give us the who shot it the minute the team and then as well the expected goals so to do this what you need to do is you just need to right click and so you right click on your mouse and then you come down here and hit inspect and then this opens up the google chrome like developer tools essentially and if you just come up and click on this box with the arrow right here this allows you to select a specific element so it allow it will allow you to select like one of these little shots right here so we click on this and then it comes and it actually highlights where that is over here so if we come down here we can see that as we highlight over all of these it looks like they're all these g tags with the cursor equals pointer and then as you kind of go through it you can see that it has different information about the the shot so how we would scrape this normally is we would come in here and we would take this g tag with the attribute the css selector of cursor equals pointer so we'll highlight that you can like triple click into it and then copy it or you can type it later if you want we'll go back to our jupyter notebook and we'll say soup dot select so we're using css selectors on this parsing object that we have and then in brackets we say it's a g tag so what they were and then brackets again sorry these were parentheses not brackets and then brackets here and then you just put in cursor equals pointer exactly how it was so what this should do is it should return a list of all of those different elements and all of the nested attributes inside of those so if we run that we actually don't get a list back and this is where we can kind of start to dive into why this is not returning anything and the reason for that is because if you were to go look around a little bit more you would find out that they're actually loading basically everything through javascript so that means that they are requiring you to run their javascript code which request does not do request only goes and gets the page source and like the css html it does not get anything that is required by javascript fortunately for us there are ways that we can kind of get around this and we can go and run that JavaScript code ourselves. And we can do that through the use of APIs. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to the page. We'll go back. And then if you still have the developer tools open, you can come up here and click on network. All these are is this is everything that is being loaded and ran to create this page. So they, if you click on all, it has basically everything that's coming in, creating the page. All we're going to be looking at is if you click on fetch slash hxr and what basically all of these are is they are all of the javascript and apis that are being ran they're basically the request the page is making to load data and information onto the page that we're seeing here so what we can do is we can go kind of look through all these um, it's easier if you hit the circle with the slash through it I like to preserve log as well, but if you just refresh the page, so to refresh the page and you can see all these are loading in and then you can kind of start to look through and see if there's something that we can find. So if we start looking through them and then all of a sudden we come across this shot map right here. So this is actually the API that they are using to down to basically fetch this shot map and load it into this little format here they're using this shot map api request we are basically going to recreate making this call to their api to get that data so what you do is you right click on shot map and then if you hit come down to copy and copy is curl there's a lot of different ways to do this it's just kind of how i do it so copy is the c url i call it curl and then go to curlconverter.com and then if you paste that in there, it'll give you all of the code you need to be able to make that request. So as you can see, here's our headers. So that's like the headers our website is sending. 
And then this is the URL of their API. And we can basically just copy to clipboard, paste here. And if we run this, you might think we're done, but let's check the status code. So if we say response.status code, we get a 304 this time. You're probably wondering, we copied the exact thing. Why are we not getting the right result? Why are we not getting a 200? So a 304, if you go dig around, it just means it's not modified and it needs a specific header to be able to pass. And that is just a date time header, essentially. So you can add this, you can do this dynamically. You can modify the code to do this dynamically. I'm just gonna show you what it needs to look like. And then you can recreate this in your own practice and kind of doing your own um, web scraping. So if you say headers and then if dash modified dash since, and then you wanna set that equal to. So basically what this is gonna do is this is gonna add another um, key and value pairing to our headers dictionary. So then you just want to say that it's, let's see, what is the current date? It is Saturday. So Saturday, the 19th of August, like that. But you need a comma after your day of the week. And then you put the day of the month, month, and then the year, 2023. And then it, you just need to put in a timestamp as well. So I do 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 GMT, like that. So now let's copy this, just this code, and we can run that again. And we'll say response.status code, and now we have a 200. So that means we have successfully made a call to their API to get that shot map data. So now if we actually wanna see that data, we can just say shots equals response.json. So this returns a JSON of the actual data. And then if we just print out the shots, we can now see all of the shots and all of the different information about each shot. So it has shot map and then it has a list of the player or a list of all the shots with player information. It has, if it's the home team, shot type, situation, the coordinates, um, which body part, which is really cool, uh, where it actually hit in the goal mouth. That's interesting. Um, it has an ID, it has the time, added time, time in seconds. So basically it has all the data we need to be able to get that shot map data. So that's kind of the gist of being able to scrape the shots. You can do, you can replicate this with all the different API requests they have. So for example, they have one that says total, which is the tournament standings is what it looks like. And then it just has who's in first. So it looks like it has Brighton and Hove Albion at this moment are in first because they have won two games. And Manchester City are in second because I think they just beat Newcastle, unless that game's not over yet. It also has different things like best players, so you can kind of see the ratings of the best player for each team. Um, managers, it has information on the managers, so Eric Ten Hag is the away manager. Home man manager is Ange Post... I can't, I can't say his last name, but anyways. And then it has different statistics, so you can get all the different stats. So this is really just kind of the tip of the iceberg, showing you the shot map of what you can actually do on this website. And it makes it so that a lot more data can be available for you to do in your analysis, for you to practice any type of data engineering, uh, data collection. So this is a really good website to try and um, improve your web scraping skills. One last thing I'll mention is if you come back to the Jupyter Notebook and you look at this request right here, so the res to the api.sofascore.com, it has this number, the 11352407, and basically that is their ID of the match. So if you come back and you look at the actual URL, you'll see it right there as well. So if you wanna replicate this to different matches, you need to get this uh, match ID, whether that's from the URL or if you find it somewhere in the page source that you can easily extract it and then you can just switch them out. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for coming to another tutorial and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.